OK. All right, so I apologize for interrupting your smooth jazz. Um, but uh, next session, I'm going to be talking about uh, Fedora AIML, in particular the AIML SIG. So what I'm fixing to talk about is a bit about our illustrious past, um, go over some common questions that I've gotten, um, talk about some of the glorious future of the SIG, and um, some time at the end for a shameless plug, um, unique plug to get people to help, and uh, some time at the end also for questions. So where the SIG came from is we kind of formed, reformed, um, end of last year, um, ended up combining um, some existing SIGs, the machine learning SIG, um, which was not very active at the time, um, the heterogeneous compute SIG, which was just starting up, and uh, kind of combined all of these just to reduce administrative overhead. So that instead of having you know, multiple tags in discourse, multiple matrix rooms, all that kind of stuff, um, that until we have too much stuff going on in one room and one place, um, we're just uh, managing the groups as one. In terms of what we want to do, um, biggest thing is just to improve the out-of-box experience for AML tools. Um, my background is I did a master's degree in machine learning, and I tried doing the machine learning stuff on Fedora, and it was painful to the point where I ended up doing all of my uh, master's degree stuff um, on Ubuntu with NVIDIA with the proprietary drivers and all that kind of stuff just because it would work. So that's how I got started in this, because I want it to work on Fedora. I want it to work with open source things, um, and I want to make it work the Fedora way. So you can just you know, DNF install, whether you're working with Torch or eventually if we get um, TensorFlow packaged, but to make that process as painless as possible um, so that people can just focus on doing um, the machine learning stuff. Also, at the same time, um, we'd like to make Fedora the best community distro. Um, for AML work. Since the last flock, um, we've gotten quite a bit done. Um, PyTorch is now packaged in Fedora. Um, 2.1's in 40. We just got the first uh, 2.4 builds in Rawhide last week. Um, 2.4 was released, I think, two weeks ago. I don't remember exactly. It was recent, though. Um, and all of that is with um, Rockham Acceleration. So it's not just CPU only. If you have a supported uh, AMD GPU, um, it will work with acceleration. And even if it's not directly supported, it should work. And if you have problems, please let us know so we can try and looking at, so we can at least try to look at it. Speaking of Rockm, we have most of Rockm packaged, um, and we've been keeping that up to date. Um, 6.1 is in Fedora 40. 6.2 is will be landing in Rawhide soon. It was just released. It has a bunch of, uh, well, its integration with L um, LLVM tends to be fun, uh, but that should be there soon. So some of the common questions I've got is, you know, why focus on Rock'em? Um, obviously, NVIDIA is the, the biggest game in town when it comes to the AI and the machine learning stuff. But with Rock'em, Rock'em is open source. Um, there's no dependency on binary blobs. Um, there aren't any restrictions on distribution, and it doesn't require stuff that we cannot package in Fedora. You know, no out-of-tree kernel modules. Um, there's uh, one of the things that a lot of these uh, AML uh, tools like to, like to do is fork LLVM. Um, and that's not something we can package, and it's not something that Rock'em requires. And these are really the reasons why we've started with Rock'em, and that's where our focus is. So a follow-up, though, another question is, well, when are you going to have CUDA? Best answer I have is I don't know, because um, by and large, it's kind of out of my control, um, or at least parts of it are. Uh, you know, until very recently, I'm not sure, uh, I mean, NVIDIA has very recently, as in like, I think within the last month, wasn't it, um, changed their, uh, the way their drivers work, where you know, we had the binary blob, and now they've moved it all into firmware so that the parts that Linux needs to access it is all open, going to be open source. Um, but CUDA is still has distribution issues. Um, it is not open source. It's not something we can easily distribute, and that makes it difficult to package in Fedora. Um, could it happen? Yes, but it would require finding a champion that really wants to have it happen. 
Um, and at the moment, the folks who are involved are more interested in the, the Rockham side of things. So looking forward, um, we're going to continue with uh, the packaging work we have been doing, um, making sure that PyTorch and Rockham stay updated and functioning. Um, one of the things we're looking at is Triton, um, which is a, pro uh, a project coming out of OpenAI um, to improve performance of um, neural network related uh, projects. Um, not clear whether we're going to be able to package that. Um, coming back to they have hard forked LLVM and require a specific git commit of LLVM in order to build Triton. Um, unclear whether we're going to be able to package that in Fedora, but um, I want to get it in Coper if we can't get it into Fedora. Non-packaging, yeah, go ahead. Do we have a, just go ahead and ask your question, I can, I'll repeat it. The question was whether I wanted uh, questions in the presentation, which um, I'm fine with. Um, I just need to be careful about time. Check, one, two. Um, the question about LLVM is there mm. are lots of like language uh, environments built on top of LLVM, and often they end up having a hard dependency on a specific version of LLVM because that community is moving at a particular speed with the infrastructure. When you get a compiler as a library or compiler infrastructure like LLVM, it can be quite sticky. What are the problems that you see in that kind of environment? Because we've got Julia that depends on LLVM, we've got Rust that depends on LLVM, we have Clang that depends on LLVM, we have Mesa that can depend on LLVM, and like, they, they might just have different dependencies in different versions. So what is, I guess my open question is, what is the problem that you see in this particular space? In, in the particular space of the AML tools? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's honestly the problem is the same with all of them. Um, LLVM is moving very quickly. Um, and in Fedora, we, the, the LLVM folks, and I'm not trying to knock them, but they do current and then one back. So like for what will be Fedora 41, I think we're going to have LLVM 19 and 18. Um, and 18 was just released six months ago. So I think that's a lot of the pain points is just things are moving so quickly and for people are forking LLVM for convenience sake. I'm not sure if I'm really answering your question. It's just I don't have a good solution. Um, but I think it's just the pace at which LLVM is moving is a lot of, I think, the root of a lot of this. For sure, I think it moves very fast. Um, the, then the, I guess the question becomes like, is there a, like I, I know Tom Stellard's working mm. on LLVM and Fedora, and so the question would then become like, do, do these other packages just have a fixed version of LLVM that they're bundling basically? But I know we don't want to have to bundle those pieces. That's, the, yeah, I mean, that would be the only way we could fix it. Um, as far as I know, that is completely forbidden uh, mm -hmm. in Fedora packaging. Um, and that's, uh, I'm not sure if I'm answering, I feel like I'm not answering your question. You are answering a question. And in fact, there are probably other places where this occurs, which you haven't seen yet, which is the NVIDIA stack, particularly going back a couple of slides to CUDA. CUDA oh. ha can have a dependency on a specific version of GCC as well, oh, yeah. where, the, where the headers are, are they, they are sticky with respect to a version of GCC. So then the, the other question there becomes is like, do you need a GCC and minus one as well in the yeah. distro? And the question that I would always want to ask in this glorious future as well is like, even with Rockham, do we have a dependency on the compiling libraries for specific GFXN versions of Rockham because they aren't always the same, yes. right? And then the combinatorial matrix of supporting all the hardware gets quite large. <laughs> I'd love yes. to see you talk uh, on, that, on that particular topic. If you had any thoughts or ideas about it. Um, it is a problem. It is only going to get worse. <laughs> Um, is, is my thoughts on it. We don't have, like, the, the first goal was let's get it packaged, let's get it working. Um, part of the one issue with Rockham in particular is, like you were saying, it has to be compiled for a specific um, 
ver specific uh, family of uh, instruction sets. Um, so that the, the, like the data center uh, cards have a different instruction set, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, and it leads to a combinatorial explosion. I think that we have, and it makes like rocket build times insane because we have to loop through, or like there was a request to make the packages smaller. So if we try and support everything in one package, we get shared libraries that are so big the linker pukes. Um, so we have to split them up. Um, and every time we split them up, we have to loop over and recompile things. So we've had, like, uh, one of the things that was keeping PyTorch 2.4 from building, like, we had a lot of failed builds because it'll just time, like, Koji will just kill it because it times out. Um, so I don't have a solution for you, but it is a problem. Um, I have a couple of ideas on how I'd like to see it fixed. Um, I think it's going to be a persistent problem within RockM, but I'm hoping to keep it there. So like, uh, I, I hope I'm making sense. This is a bit of a stream of consciousness. Um, so that, yeah, and so we don't have to then go forward building one version of PyTorch for um, GFX 11. We don't have to go 10 and then nine and then, you know, one version for CUDA and then one version for CPU only and then one version for Apple Silicon. Um, so I don't have a solution. It is a problem and I would like to see it uh, fixed. I hope I, at least somewhat addressed it. There's another question back there? Or did you have? Uh, no, it's not an additional oh. question, it's a separate question. Since Hello? Yeah, there we go. Uh, since there is a, uh, we, like a lot of people have NVIDIA cards, including me, I'm gonna have to switch over to ROCM because I can see already that it's gonna be too hard to support it. So uh, the NVIDIA toolkits and stuff. Uh, is it impossible to run like uh, GPU systems on external GPUs? Um, to a certain extent, uh, I've heard there are problems with Apple. People are telling me that Apple can't do it, but I'm thinking about maybe a regular system can do it. I don't know. I, I mean, it depends on which particular iteration. I've heard stories that there are compatibility problems there. I haven't dug into it enough. I recently just got uh, an external GPU myself, um, and I want to start testing with it. Um, but I've heard stories. I don't. I can't comment on how compatible it may or may not be because I haven't tried it myself. Other questions? Did you have a question? Okay. Um, beyond packaging, some of the things that I'd, um, I'd like to see is I want to see us start working on um, containers for some of this stuff. Um, these stacks tend to be very fragile and they are very particular, you know, as was mentioned before, of what version of this, what version of that, and that kind of stuff. And I see containers as one way to help alleviate that concern. Um, so I want to start working on that. Um, getting back to you, you know, what he was also talking about with a combinatorial explosion, try to make some of these packages smaller and make these builds less insane. Um, so that we can actually start building stuff in Coper, because the RockM stuff we cannot build in Coper right now because Coper will kill it, um, because they have a hard-coded max timeout of, I think, three days, um, and that's longer than some of the RockM packages take to build on the small VMs. Um, and the other thing that I, I keep saying, and I've made a little bit of progress, I want to make more progress on is automated testing. Um, to, uh, you know, we can build the stuff, we can put it out there, um, but, um, I don't think I need, well, why we would need automated testing and why that's important is either already known or at a minimum uh, a topic for a different talk. So one thing that I would uh, like to know, um, not necessarily right now, but if you want to come talk to me later, um, is what do people want to see? Is there something that is out there um, that you'd like to see in Fedora? Um, at least tell us about it. Ideally, um, come help make it a reality. Um, but at minimum, if we don't know that it's something people are looking for, there's not much we can do about it. So in terms of getting involved, um, we do have a uh, review tracker. Um, there are a couple of packages pending review right now that I know of. Um, the, these slides are available off of the schedule, um, so the, that link will be clickable. Um, we do have some of a packaging wish list. Um, TensorFlow is on there. Um, if you are a brave soul um, and want to tackle that, uh, please, come t please come talk to me. Um, there is a very deep dependency tree there um, around Basil, which is the build system used for TensorFlow that has been the stopping point for other people who've tried it in the past. 
Um, I've been told there might be an alternative to it recently, but that was one matrix message earlier today. I don't know, I can hope. Um, and then testing. Um, if you have workflows that do or do not work, um, or workflows that we can use um, to start verifying or to, to run automated tests, uh, demo projects, that kind of stuff, that'd be great. If you had access to data center accelerators, that would be awesome. That is one hole that we have and I think is we are going to have for the foreseeable future, that especially with AMD, um, their data center accelerators work on a different, a, at least a slightly different, uh, or they're a different graphics family than the stuff that we actually have access to. Um, so at that point, we're kind of building and hoping because we don't have a way to test it. We do have regular meetings um, every other Thursday. Uh, next week will be the next meeting. It's all in Matrix. Um, links there for the, and uh, the other contact links we have. Um, we're most active on Matrix, so feel free to come find us there. And that's uh, all I had uh, covered. Do we have any more questions? Um, you didn't mention anything about Intel. Is there any effort going on with them? Um, the which Intel? <laughs> They're two. They have two stacks. Yeah. I'm. You're, you talk, you're talking about what well, was one e API. Either, either one of them. Right I mean, now. Gaudi is completely closed, as far as I know. Um, but if I'm wrong on that, um, I mean that hardware is also unobtainium right, right now. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem with Intel stack is LLVM. Um, they just got to LLVM 15 earlier this year, as far as I know, and they do require a hard fork. So it has to be their fork of LLVM, otherwise the stack does not work. So there's interest in it. There are people who have worked on parts of the stack, but until in particular that issue with the forked LLVM is solved, it's not something we can have in Fedora proper. Um, I'd love to put it in Coper. It's something that's been in the back of my mind. Um, but yeah, the fork to LLVM is the biggest problem at the moment. Does that yeah. answer your question? Yeah, well, it just, I find it curious that, I mean, Intel and, and AMD are getting their asses kicked by NVIDIA, and you yeah. think it would be in their real interest to make this as simple as possible so they'd have an opportunity in this world. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, secondly, is this part of Project uh, Mullet, or is this something different? Uh, it's different. Um, and for, for reference, he's talking about uh, uh, an internal Red Hat effort uh, that's related but separate. Okay, we have one more question over there. Uh, related to the Intel thing, there's mm -hmm. the whole uh, and, and Intel NPU and uh, the AMD XDNA mm. stuff. Are, are those going to be, I don't even know if those things are even close to open source. Um, one is, one is not. Um, AMD said very clearly when they released it that their NPU, or I forget exactly what they call it, was not going to work on Linux. They had no intention of making it work on Linux. Um, they faced a little bit of backlash about this, so they changed their stance to be, we're working on Windows first, we'll eventually get to Linux. Um, my understanding is with Intel's NPU stuff, that is already part of their one API, and I there's another name for it when they moved it to Linux uh, Foundation. I can never remember um, what the name of it is, but um, that stack, as far as I know, does work with their NPUs, and there's at least code. It's supposed to work on Linux. I haven't tried it personally. So you've brought up that there's, you know, forks of LVM, you know, as part of, of some of these efforts. What keeps that those changes from making it upstream from these these different projects is it is it a significant change that's not appropriate for upstream or is there other things involved there um to be honest i'm probably not the best person for that question um if you've talked to like tom stellard he's probably would have a more detailed um answer what i suspect it is is that people want to get it done they want to get it done now um, some of the stuff I've seen in a lot of this code is up until, what, like a year or two ago, this was all academic stuff, and it was academics working on it. And now all of a sudden there's this push to commercialize it. So I think they just kind of took it, they made it work the way they needed to, didn't think about what Upstream would like, and now they're try there's a bit of a conflict there. Um, so I think it's just a, it wasn't a priority when the stuff was written. That's a guess on my part. Gotcha. Thanks. That's your question? Or, well, as much as I can answer it. <laughs> okay, one more. What's your name in the day? Are you Gimli? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I sent you a message earlier. 
Um, you, going to the opening meeting of the uh, the surveys, what they're talking about from the council. Yeah. And they said they were people are you know 80 percent unsure they want a digital assistant or not. Uh, it means that you would have to make it optional by the survey, obviously. Yes. But uh, I was going to say there is a way to make a digital assistant very easily. It's in beta right now with Ubuntu. It's called LM Studio. It can make a server on your own computer. So hmm. you just set an API endpoint of the open API, so open AI software. So it's like your IP address in slash V1, and it'll query the LLM with context and everything. You can plug it into your IDEs. You can plug it into digital assistants. You can plug it into, uh, theoretically, you can plug it into your office software if you wanted to. So it's a good option for the future. So I sent you a message for that on the Okay, city. yeah, I, Thank you. we've not met before, but now that you're talking about that, I remember seeing that message and we can talk about that um, and what options there may be. Um, any other questions? Although I think we may be out of time. No, we have still four minutes. If oh, there okay. are more questions. That's faster than I thought. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry if you already mentioned this and I mm. missed it, but uh, when like uh, PyTorch and all the stuff is packaged in Fedora, uh, what would be like, would there be like multiple packages for different versions, like if a project requires a specific version to run, or would the way to do it be like in a container, or like how would that work? Um, we have one version of PyTorch packaged for a single release of Fedora at a single point in time. Um, so if there is a hard requirement on a specific version, you may want to look into containers just for that reason. Um, we don't have compat packages. So like, for example, I had said that like, uh, in Fedora 40 right now, we have PyTorch 2.1. In Rawhide, we have 2.4. There's, we're not, we don't have any plans to do compat packages, um, and I'm not sure we have the uh, spare brain power. <laughs> um, if someone wants to come help, I'm not, I don't think we'd turn it down, but if you have a hard uh, requirement of a specific PyTorch version, yeah, I would probably start looking at containers. That answer your question? Okay. Okay, any other question? All right. No? Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.